Welcome to the second Lightroom Masterclass episode. This video will be all about Lightroom's most powerful tool, masks and how to use them. Understanding when and where to use masks will improve your editing skills dramatically. This video will be very detailed, so check the chapters to quickly navigate to the parts you are interested in. To follow along, make sure to grab the raw file from the link in the description of the video. In the first episode, we talked about basic adjustments. Changing those sliders affected the whole photo. Lightroom's mask feature, however, allows you to make precise adjustments to specific areas of your photo. Using a range of tools, you can create masks that target specific colors, tones, or areas of the image. This feature is particularly useful for landscape photography, where you might want to brighten or darken certain parts of the image or selectively adjust the colors. You can open up the masks panel by clicking on the small circle icon. This will reveal all the available masks. Depending on when you watch this video, this might look a bit different, since Adobe is constantly updating this feature. Let's start with the most basic masks the Linear Gradient, Radial Gradient and the Brush Tool. Click on Linear Gradient. Then click in the photo and hold down the left mouse key while dragging down this mask. You will see a red overlay which represents the area affected by the masks we are creating. The further you drag the mouse down, the softer the gradient or mask's edge will be. Making use of a soft edge is important for subtle changes like darkening the sky, but you can use hard edges to target the ocean right up to the horizon as an example. Holding down the shift key while creating the linear gradient will give you a perfectly straight, horizontal or vertical mask. Once we have created our mask, you can find it in the masks panel, where you can further modify it, but more on that later. Here you can also activate or deactivate the overlay. I recommend turning it off for simpler work since it can be quite distracting, but for more complex masks, turning on the overlay is very helpful. Now let's make a few adjustments to this linear gradient. You'll find everything that can be changed in the menu on the right. Tone, color, presence and detail. I do want to add some more punch to the sky. Expand the tone panel and drop the highlights. I also want to raise the contrast and by doing this we will get a bit more details by making the clouds more visible. To further improve this effect, expand the presence panel and just add a bit of clarity. That's looking pretty good so far. You can turn the mask on and off by hovering over the mask and clicking on that little eye icon. Next, let's get some attention on the waterfall. Click on create new mask. And here we are choosing the radial gradient. Click on the waterfall and drag up the mask. You can of course always position it more precisely by dragging it around. You see, with the radial gradient we can nicely target an area around the subject. Instead of targeting a wider line like with the previously used linear gradient. Here you set up the mask's edge with the feather slider. In most cases, I turn up the feather all the way to get a nice subtle effect out of it. A radial mask without feathering is easy to spot, so the use cases for that are pretty limited. Let's bring up the feather to 100. Back to the waterfall. To make it pop, let's make it brighter by raising the exposure carefully. Just like explained in the previous video, Always make sure to keep an eye on the histogram. We don't want to add any overexposure on this waterfall. Just to be safe, let's bring down the highlights. Finally, add a little bit of texture, clarity and dehaze for a sharp, clear look. Toggle the visibility of this radial gradient again to see the before and after results. And you can see that's looking much better, right? Next, we can bring some more attention to the center of the image. And we can do that by creating a vignetting effect. Lightroom does have a slider for just that specific effect, but we can make use of a radial gradient to get a more precise result. Again, click on create your mask and choose radial gradient. 
For a good vignetting effect we want the radial mask to cover the whole image. And there's an easy trick to do that. Hold down the control key and double click. Perfect. Now we just need to invert the mask to affect the area outside of it. So make sure to click on that checkbox. For the vignetting effect you might want to reduce the feather slightly. Then carefully bring down the exposure. And there you have created a quick, easy and subtle vignetting effect, which can be further adjusted in size and brightness if you want. One more trick, which I often apply using a radial gradient, is a very cool sunlight slash glow effect. Let's create another radial mask. Place it in the direction the light is coming from. Make sure its center is outside the image, which will just give you a more natural effect and also we are going to stretch this one a little bit. Depending on the angle of the sunlight, you might also want to rotate this radial mask, but in this case we don't need much rotation. You might think adding light is best done by increasing exposure or highlights, but this will most likely give you overexposure. Instead, let's raise the blacks. This basically lessens the contrast while making the darkest parts brighter and thus it ends up looking like a very natural light effect. We can make this effect stronger by adding negative dehaze. So let's head into the present step and bring down the dehaze slider. Again, pay close attention to the histogram because this can lead to clipping. Usually sunlight tend to be a bit warmer. So go ahead, expand the color tab. Here you will find the white blend settings which you can use to add warmth. So bring up the temperature for that. Perfect. At this point I do have a feeling the radial gradient edge is a little bit too harsh, so I want to bring back the feather to 100, just make this effect a little more subtle as you can see. Then next up the brush tool. This one is best used when you want to target very specific areas. Create a new brush mask. You will notice a bunch of new options on the right. You can adjust the brush size, feather, as well as flow and density, with the latter two acting similar to opacity. Bringing down flow and density makes the brush just a little less visible, which is great for very subtle adjustments. Then we have the auto mask checkbox. If this is activated, the brush tries to automatically target similar colors when brushing over areas. Most times I would not recommend using that tool since we have a bunch of masks available to do a better job, but more on that later. I have set up the brush, now I want to target the water around the bottom of the cliffs. So I'm just going to brush over them. I do want to make those parts brighter, therefore I just raise the exposure again. And for more details on the waves, I'm going to bring up the clarity and the texture. Wonderful. Now that was it for the basic stuff. Let's get more into the fun things. Next up, we're taking a closer look at color and luminance range masks. Plus, I will show you how to further modify masks using subtract, add and intersect. The luminance range mask is used to target specific tonal values. Right now, the shadows in the cliffs are a hint too dark. Go ahead and create a luminance range mask. Once you clicked on it, you will notice the mouse changing to the eyedrop icon hovering over the photo. Go over one of the darkest parts of the cliff and click in there. Make sure the overlay is checked to see the results. You notice this mask is now targeting all the areas with similar tonal values, so all the dark shadows of the image. At the same time, we do have a new weird looking slider in the right menu. With this, you can further adjust the luminance range this mask is targeting. At the moment, it is only targeting the very darkest parts, which is indicated by that rectangle. As with the previously explained masks, we can also set the feather for this one by dragging up or down the small arrow pin on the right. In this case, let's raise the feather slightly so we get a more subtle change without harsh edges. Now that we have set up the luminance range mask, let's make the shadows brighter. For that, raise the exposure. Doing that, you want to be extra cautious, since overdoing this will be obvious very very fast. Wonderful, this looks much better. 
we can experiment a little more with the luminance range mask. Create another one. To set up the range, you don't actually have to click in the image. You can just use the slider for that. Let's try to target the white water at the bottom of the cliffs again. For that, we want to filter out the darks by raising that slider. And also, we don't want to include the brightest parts, so bring down the upper end. You can activate the luminance map, which makes it easier to set up the range correctly. At this point, we have nicely selected the waves at the bottom. But there's a problem. There are many more areas with the same tonal value throughout the image. This means we have to adjust the mask to only target the waves. This is the point where we are making use of the intersect tool. Click on the mask, then click on the three dots. Now go to intersect mask width. There are a bunch of viable options to achieve what we want to do, but to get a precise result, choose the brush tool and then just brush along the bottom of the cliffs. This way, we are intersecting the luminance range mask with the brush and we are left with only the part we want to adjust. Again, let's raise the exposure and make those parts slightly brighter. At this point, I hope you can see the value of understanding how to use masks, since those are just so insanely powerful, it's like you almost don't need Photoshop anymore. But we do have a few more things to explore. Create a new mask and choose the color range mask this time. Again, the mouse changes to the eyedropper icon when hovering over the image and we want to click somewhere in the yellow grass. This way you can get a rather wide selection of all the yellow colors. We can narrow it down by dropping the refine slider or get a wider selection by increasing it. In this case, let's bring it down a little bit. I don't want to target too much of the image. I think that's a good spot right there. With the grass selected, I do want to raise the clarity and I also want to add texture just to give those areas some more punch. We could even play around with the saturation, making this shot a little more vibrant. Wonderful. Now I want to add some more contrast to the sky. To achieve that, I aim to make the blue tones darker without touching the clouds. Again, create a color range mask. Click in the blue part of the sky. By the way, holding down the shift key, you can add multiple color points to this mask. This time, we do have also selected the ocean, which of course we don't want. To fix that, we can either use the intersect tool again, or we can make use of the subtract feature. Let's use the later one. Click on subtract. Here, we are choosing a simple linear gradient. Starting just above the ocean, drag up the linear gradient towards the top of the image. We want to have a nice fade for this mask, and thus we just subtracted the linear gradient from the color range mask, getting rid of the ocean selection in the bottom half. Once that is done, bring down the exposure. See how we can nicely target the blues without changing the clouds brightness. I love adding this effect. Then I also want to make the bottom part with the ocean a little more interesting. For that, let me just create a very simple radial gradient. Of course, using this I can't target the whole ocean surface, but we can make use of the add button. So click on it, and to keep it simple, just choose another radial gradient. Here we are just going to roughly add a bit more of that ocean to this mask. Perfect. You can keep on refining masks this way by adding or subtracting as many masks as you want, but I'm happy with this for now. So to make the ocean pop, I'm just adding a little more clarity. That looks awesome. And now we are almost done. There's just one more thing I want to talk about and that's the AI masks. For the most part, these are all pretty self-explanatory. They try to select the subject, the sky, the background of an image or people automatically. As a landscape photographer, I'm only really making use of the select sky mask. But depending on the scene, Lightroom has a hard time to get a proper selection, especially when there are clouds overlapping the landscape, like in this case. Just keep in mind, we can still use it, since we can also further modify this mask by making use of the subtract add or intersect features. 
So with this guy mask, let's just bring up the clarity a notch. Going to add a little more contrast to the sky this way. And finally, there is the object selection. Again, as a landscape photographer, I don't use this one very often, but it seems to work relatively good. You can choose between the brush mode and the rectangle selection. So going with the brush mode, you are simply brushing over the object you want to select and Lightroom then tries to detect the subject. Going with the rectangle mode, you are simply going to drag up a rectangle around the thing you want to select and again Lightroom will target the object. As you can see this works pretty good with that waterfall, but I'm not going to adjust that one further. So once we are done with the masking, you can toggle all the masks on and off by clicking this little switch up here. Notice how we just used a bunch of masks to completely change the original RAW file. This is why it's so important to really understand how masks work. It will dramatically improve your editing skills. So I hope this masterclass was interesting and helpful. I hope you could learn something new from this video. But if you have any questions left, make sure to ask in the comments. In next week's masterclass, we will be talking about the tone curve. So make sure to subscribe to always be updated and thank you very much for watching this video.